to this Sunday morning act of worship. Some of you will be aware that during this past week I've been in hospital and um, I have um, shared quite openly that for me it was um, a very moving and profound um, experience apart from the reasons I was there. But actually being in hospital at this time was a real eye-opener to me to see firsthand the amazing dedication of all staff on the hospital wards and in theatres. To be in a context of what's sometimes called Covid creep. Where you can almost see the march of Covid through the hospital, but in terms of um, an out of control spreading of the virus, but in terms of responding to the hundreds who are being admitted for nursing care. I don't know what you think about how we are supposed to respond to all that we see, either have experienced ourselves or see on our media. We see numbers rising. We see hospital staff at the point of exhaustion. And actually we see key workers across the board from every area of work, anxious, some feeling that they are putting themselves at risk by returning to work. There's been a lot of conversation during this past week about schools opening and whether teachers are safe in the classroom. And yet amazingly, we've seen the most wonderful efforts of teachers and others like them turning up to work to teach, to provide care for key workers' children. 
What are we supposed to do? Well, as a church, have you heard this? Some people often say, well, you know, at least we can pray. At least we can pray. I want to lead us this morning in what some might call a litany of prayer, a set of prayers with fixed responses. Some might call it a, a concert of prayer, time given over just to pray. And it seems appropriate that as we enter again this period of lockdown, as we carry on through January and February, possibly into March, that we bring this whole situation before God and pray. So this won't be a normal service, but then these are not normal days. And there are some days when just a normal service, it seems to me, won't do. So we're going to have some music, going to be some prayers and a, a couple of Bible readings as we move through this time of prayer this morning. So I just encourage you to be still, to be comfortable, maybe to find a Bible if you've got one. I'm going to play some music in a minute so you can nip off and do that if you need to. Or just to sit and to rest and to listen and to allow God by his spirit to speak with your own heart and allow you to speak with his. Before our next piece of music, we have our first prayer. And the response is, have mercy on us. God, our creator, have mercy on us. Christ, our Redeemer, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, our comfort and guide, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. going to play our next piece of music. It's a worship song by Jonathan Vieira, King of Kings, Majesty.
I want to read some verses from Psalm 66. Psalm 66, as we open God's Word together. It's a psalm of praise in which David expresses his total confidence in God. He says this, Come and listen. Psalm 66, verse 16. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in my prayer. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. As we come to pray together a little later, the Psalms have been, I'm sure, to you and to me, a real help, a real encouragement. No less so than our next song, Psalm 23. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. The Lord's my shepherd,
to read some verses to you from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Colossae, Colossians. This is a wonderful letter in as much as that it begins with this great hymn of praise and thanksgiving, which leads into a passage which presents the supremacy of Christ. He is the image, he writes, of the firstborn God, the firstborn over all created. By him all things were made, things in heaven and on earth. And he goes on to speak about his love for the church. And he says in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, For this reason, writes the Apostle Paul, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all special wisdom and understanding, spiritual wisdom and understanding. He says, for this reason, we've not stopped praying about you. We've heard about you. We've heard about you. He writes to say, news of you has reached us. We know what's happening in the church. We know what's going on in the world around you. We know the very context in which you live and seek to witness to Christ. We know all about you. For this reason, we've not stopped praying for you. A little later on in chapter 4, before he gets to the end, the final greetings of his letter, the Apostle Paul writes, chapter 4 and verse 2, Devote yourselves to prayer being watchful and thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. I don't know how watchful we are, in fact, in our praying. I sometimes wonder how thankful we are in our praying. But one of the reasons, perhaps, that we struggle to find, yeah, if you find reasons to be thankful, is because we are not watchful. We're not attentive to the world in which we live, perhaps to people's needs. We're not praying intelligently. By that I don't mean that our prayers are stupid. I simply mean that our prayers are not focusing upon reality. And the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Colossae and says, amazingly, he says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And here he says, now you do the same. When you pray, yes, be devoted to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. Seems to me that a watchful church is a thankful church. A watchful Christian is a thankful Christian, a prayer meeting that is watchful, is a meeting in which there will be great rejoicing. For as we watch and we pray in relation to what we see, it's easier for us to note those times when God answers our prayers. I don't know if you're in the habit of keeping a prayer journal. It's something which I've done periodically, perhaps haven't done often enough. But if we record those things for which we pray, how much more thankful would we be when we come together in worship to celebrate God's faithfulness in prayer? Remember, it was the psalmist who said, God has surely listened and heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. And so we are going to be praying together. And our prayers will perhaps be a little longer than you might otherwise expect. But let's just be still for a moment. And before each section of prayers, I'll remind you what the response is. Let's just then be still for a moment. We're going to pray today again for 
all who are affected by coronavirus. I'm going to be praying today for all who are at all who are supporting our common life and all who are, as it were, at the very front line. Prompted by my experience, prompted by all that we see happening around us as we watch. We see the spread of this second strain of coronavirus. And with many thousands more, numbers now higher in our hospitals than back at the height of the first lockdown in March and April this year. So we begin by praying for all those most affected today by coronavirus. And the response to these prayers is simply hear us, O Christ. Hear us, O Christ. We pray for all who are sick with COVID-19 and the new strains of the virus, that they may be healed. Hear us, O Christ. For surgeons, doctors, nurses and all healthcare providers, for hospital and home care workers, for all who nurse in intensive care units, who manage wards and resources, that they may themselves be protected by infection, from infection, find relief from their stress, and be comforted in their sorrow. And for all who need strength to withstand the exhaustion and distress of their work, for those who are anxious about turning up for their next shift, and those who may be even considering giving up nursing or leaving caring professions. Hear us, O Christ. For older people and all with conditions that put them at risk, for all who are quarantined or sheltering in isolation, For all who are anxious, fearful of others and themselves. For all who, because of existing health challenges, disease and infection and injury, and whose physical health and emotional well-being are a concern to them and to others, we pray, hear us, O Christ. For key workers separated from their children and families. Keep them safe for their children in school and all who support them, for loved ones separated by distance and quarantine, and for all who long to be reunited. May they know the comfort of your presence. We pray, hear us, O Christ. For head teachers, class teachers, teaching assistants, school administrators and site managers, for catering and all other staff supporting children and their families during this latest lockdown. For those providing transport, nursing and healthcare support in school for vulnerable children, for all who are homeschooling, challenged by their own lack of knowledge, patience and resources, for those who have limited inside and outside space, 
for those children excluded from their school communities because they are shielding or because of their challenging behaviour. And for those children who still lack the technology, enabling them full participation in lessons at home. We pray, hear us, O Christ. And we think of those who have lost jobs, who are laid off with no income, all who are having to work harder to protect their livelihoods with reduced income for small business owners and their employees on our high streets, in our communities, in danger of losing their livelihood and fearful for their employees. For everyone in hospitality and recreation and entertainment industries who are now no able, not able to run their businesses, events or open their facilities. And for all who, without warning, find themselves and their families in desperate need of cash, food, shelter and other basics of life. For all who are working in our local communities, in our district and parish councils, local charities and others, to ensure that all those in need are not lost, but their situations are understood and their needs met. And so we pray, hear us, O Christ. We pray for prisoners and detained immigrants, people in homeless shelters, for all confined or in crowded situations, that they may be cared for, for families and individuals in temporary accommodation, for the homeless and the destitute, and those struggling to settle back into society for all providing shelter, sanctuary, counselling and hope. Hear us, O Christ. And now in our prayers we turn to those who support our common life together. For all GPs, for nurses and administrators in our local surgeries, for community nurses and midwives, for mental health teams and social workers, for all those visiting homes to provide care, to deliver prescriptions, to provide meals to those who are vulnerable and isolated. Our rest- By your Holy Spirit, strengthen them. By your Holy Spirit, strengthen them. For all care and nursing homes, for those who by their devotion to living and dedication to the dying ensure dignity, for all in their care at all times. We especially remember those responsible for the administration of the vaccine to the most vulnerable in our care homes. For all nursing and care staff who are weary and worried and their families who may be anxious and afraid. By your Holy Spirit, Strengthen them. And now for all those who produce, prepare and deliver food to our supermarkets and who work to keep them open, stocked and safe for us to visit. For chemists. For the post office and others who deliver letters and parcels to our communities local businesses and our homes. 
for all who provide public transport, bus and taxi drivers, and those mechanics who keep vehicles safe, and cleaners who ensure that they are safe to ride in. And for all who provide banking support, payment of benefits, local charities offering support to all in need. We pray by your Holy Spirit, strengthen them. For the ambulance service, for first responders and paramedics, for our air ambulances, for our police and local community support officers, for our fire service, for our armed forces who have the responsibility of delivering millions of vaccines across the nation over the coming weeks, we pray by your Holy Spirit, strengthen them. For researchers, for scientists, all learning about COVID and its various strains, developing vaccines and related treatments, responding to now, preparing for the future. For all who work in laboratories, developing, testing and transporting vaccines and other drugs. For local and national public health officials, centres for disease control and prevention, government and charitable bodies delivering health care, education and resources. For these we pray, by your Holy Spirit, strengthen them. And today we pray for government officials and civic leaders in every council and every county. That they may be wise and compassionate. That they may cooperate in caring for the whole human community without exception. And for those who have responsibility to define policy and create laws to ensure the fair distribution of vaccines to all nations, irrespective of wealth, politics or location. We pray by your Holy Spirit, strengthen them. And now we pray for the world in which we live and for the renewing of creation. Our prayer is, our response is, Lord, renew. and help us. Lord, renew and help us. For all open spaces where all can breathe deeply and safely. For those places where we can smell, touch, see and hear life in all its delightful forms. For places where we can sit, walk, and run for all created life that enriches, rejoices and accompanies us, for our pets who gladden our hearts, our plants that brighten our homes and for every expression of creativity that gives calm, joy and hope. We pray, Lord, renew us and help us. We thank God for places of reflection, of stillness, of healing 
and of encounter. For green shoots breaking ground. For new growth changing landscape. For buds appearing on branches and stems alike. For stillness. Movement, silence, noise. For warmth and cold. For blue and grey. For winter and spring, we thank you. Lord, we pray, renew us and help us. We pray for the church, once again dispersed as we are today, yet united, our buildings closed, but our hearts very much open still. Our candles are unlit, but the light of Christ is still shining. Our voices are not heard collectively together, but still we offer prayer and praise. In the response to these prayers, Lord, hear us. Lord, mercifully hear us. We thank you for the gospel of Jesus, for the good news that gives life to the dead, comforts the sad, gives hope to all who despair, and gives confidence to all who are afraid, and peace to all who are troubled. For the abundant life that's gifted to everyone, everyone who puts their faith in Christ, for the shared life we enjoy as sisters and brothers in Christ, and the eternal life for us upon the cross. Lord, hear us. Lord, mercifully hear us. For our desire to reap such a harvest in our communities, a harvest, people of all ages, families, friends and strangers, all becoming members of God's family through faith in Jesus. Safe, assured, comforted and redeemed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Justin, our Archbishop, for our Bishops Tim, Debbie and David, for Archdeacon Richard, for Area Dean Peter, and for all priests, church wardens, administrators and congregations. Lord, hear us. Lord, mercifully hear us. For our worship and service, That God may continue to be present by his Holy Spirit's power, making the grace of Christ possible for all. Just where they are, as they are, no matter their need in these difficult days. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For our unity and love for one another. May it be deeper and deepening. May it encourage and be encouraging hope for the present and confidence for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And may we, Lord, today receive you afresh into our hearts and give ourselves afresh in service as marvellous lights, declaring the praise of him who has called us out of darkness into his most wonderful light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
we pause to remember all who have died and all who today mourn their passing for all who care for the dead and love the living for hospital chaplains and staff who have to share the saddest news with families and for all loved ones who have not been present at the moment of death for hospital staff who hold hands of the dying and comfort them in their final isolated moments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so now being watchful, we pray for ourselves and the response to our prayer is creator god watch over us your people creator god watch over us your people loving father give hope to the hopeless courage to the fearful peace to the anxious that they may rest and trust in you. Creator God, watch over your people. Loving Father, heal our divisions. Teach us to share with each other. Unite us in care for one another as you care for us. And may we turn our faces again to you. See you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Follow you more nearly, day by day. Creator God, watch over us, your people. Loving God, create in us a spirit of gentleness and generosity, that we may dwell in your creation and in this time with kindness and courage, with generosity and humility. Creator God, watch over us your people. We give thanks for the goodness we see around us, for the acts of justice, kindness and peace, for those who risk themselves to serve others. For those who hold all the world in prayer. We pray, Creator God, watch over us, your people. As we draw this litany of prayer, this concert of prayer to a close, we say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank you for joining with us this morning for this service of prayer, holding particularly before God those who are at the front line of delivering care and healing to all those caught up in this COVID pandemic. We prayed for those on the front line and for those who work for our common good. We prayed for the church. We remembered those who were dying and who have died. And we prayed for ourselves. Let me remind you that we've been thinking this morning about devoting ourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, being watchful and thankful. I pray that as we journey through this coming week, as more and more we are witnesses of those becoming sick and even dying. Let us be watchful in our praying and thankful too. I've enjoyed being with you this morning. And as we leave now, I leave you with a recording of John Rutter's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you.
I'm grateful for those who have watched my own situation this week and have prayed for me. As we pray for one another, may we be more watchful and bring to God those things that are real, urgent and of the moment and do so rejoicing for as the psalmist himself declared I called to the Lord and he heard my voice well blessings and much love to you this service will be uploaded onto YouTube and onto Facebook a little later, hopefully with some images um, and without me sat here, um, but you'll hear my voice. Good to see you. I can see lots of people with us today. Um, I can see at the end here, Peggy, good morning, Isabel, Ben, I can see as well, Kay and a number of others. Thank you for your prayers, for your love. Let's hold one another and look forward to answered prayer and for better times. God bless you all.